Thank you so much for letting me come and be here with you all today and talk to you. It is such an honor. I have three grandbabies, and they are two, three, and four. The four-year-old is actually, this month, four and a half. And something extraordinary happened. All of a sudden, one day, or one night, she woke up and she got in her parents' bed and she began saying, I'm afraid of dying. This had never occurred to her before. I think it happens when you're four and a half. <laughs> So then she began to have nightmares, and she uh, began to worry that her mother would die. What am I going to do if you die? How does she even know what death is? She doesn't know what death is. None of us know what death is. But she was certainly afraid. One of the questions she asked is, what is an executioner? I don't know where they find these words, but then I said to my daughter, what did you tell her? And she said, I told her I would never die. I told her I would always be here, that she must not worry about it, that there is no way that I would ever not be present for her. And I said, that's exactly the right thing to say. <laughs> because the fact of the matter is, as you all know, in this community and with these extraordinary people guiding us, you know that we don't die. We change shape. <laughs> we also know that there are walking among us spiritual beings. I want to talk about the goodness of this universe. I'm going to talk about the, the love that is poured upon us all the time. We had this beautiful meditation that Rita, is it? That Rita led us in, and I love the word heroic that she used. Because sometimes it feels as if our lives are too much for us and that what we're asked to do is too heroic. And the answer is, yes, it's true. We're not promised that nothing awful will happen in our lives. We're told that we're not alone. We're told that God's timing is perfect. I had an example of this this morning when I was talking to a friend of mine who is a brilliant ex-Marine. I mean, he has an IQ of about 167. And being a Marine, he goes. <laughs> and his whole idea of life, having come from a rather dysfunctional family, is that you do it yourself, you do it the best you can, you grind it out, and you succeed because you're a Marine and you're going to make it. So what he discovered was that for the past six years he's been unable to have a job. He's not a Marine, and he has been ground down into the dust until finally, finally, he submitted a little bit of humility. It took six years for him to realize that he wasn't getting anywhere and that it didn't help him to use four and five syllable words when four words might do to use 10. As he, he finally began to get humble. And now, guess what? He got a job. Well, we were all thrilled with the job and his job is with the Vietnam Memorial. And he told me today that not only has he been in the job for eight weeks, but they haven't fired him. Yeah. <laughs> and moreover, and here's where the God part comes in, he finds himself in charge of a program in Vietnam, where he served, that is cleaning up some of the ordinance 
that the Americans left there, 365,000 unexploded bombs in one small area of North Korea, no, North Vietnam. And his job is to keep babies and children and women and farmers from being blown up and maimed and wounded and killed by this leftover ordinance. And he's so amazed that this is what he's being asked to do. It's sort of the achievement of, him, of everything that he would have wanted to do. But he couldn't do it until he was crowned down and finally could get on his knees and say, OK, what do you want me to do? I surrender. I can't do it myself as a Marine guy. Go do it. I write a lot about angels. Once I saw an angel. And uh, for those of you who have had the privilege of seeing into the spiritual dimension, it is so beautiful. And we are so much loved. Afterwards, you can never, never doubt for a moment that you're loved. What you do doubt is yourself. Am I good enough? <laughs> Am I doing enough? But you, you can't doubt that we're being watched over. It's so easy to forget. It's so easy to forget that we are in the care of this mystery that we call God, for want of a better word, the Holy Spirit, whatever it is, and that we are surrounded by the loving care of the ones who have gone ahead of us, our parents and the friends and and that they are on our side and watching and that the angels are there watching that we all have this it's nothing special every one of us has these guardians the business of God is always the business of love I think that while there are angels surrounding us, we are also asked to be angels. And I think that this happens to us all the time. We have intuitions, we have these nudges, and we are being asked to be angels to each other, as Rita was talking, and to pass this honey of love back and forth to deepest prayer that we can do is the prayer of the heart in which we just send wordless, silent energy of love out toward the person that we're praying for or the situation you're praying for. We don't have to ask anything. We don't have to use a lot of words. We don't even have to use the shorthand help. We just present ourselves and and send out this light and it will and it will work because we're in partnership with this spiritual dimension and why pray you know what i want what's the point and the answer came back the way you see a painting all at once and then it divided itself into three separate parts and the first was you pray so that we will know what you want in order that we can bring you what you need. And the second part was, because when you pray, you may be on your knees and talking for 10 minutes, but for 10 seconds in there, at some point, you will shut up and surrender, which creates a window through which we can dive and bring you the desire of your heart. And the third reason I would never have thought of in a thousand years, the third reason was because we need, we, the spiritual dimension that we call God, we need the energy of your prayers and thoughts in order to do our work. And our work is to serve you. 